Howdy. Well, I am excited to be joined by uh, five professionals, including myself today, who are going to give you some brief overviews of uh, training requirements for the five health professions mentioned here. And as we go through these training requirements, we're going to focus on training and credentials that are tied directly to clinical practice, as opposed to, to focusing on degrees that might be more likely to be associated with research. Uh, we're also going to tend to avoid uh, issues like uh, board certification and focus on just different areas of training and where they lead in clinical practice. We're gonna start with nurses uh, presented by Dr. Timmerman. Hi, I'm Professor Gail Timmerman. I'm Professor and Associate Dean of Academic Affairs at the School of Nursing and one of your course directors. A registered nurse is a license to practice professional nursing. You qualify to take the licensure exam by graduating from either an associate's degree in nursing or a bachelor's degree in nursing. Both are undergraduate degrees. Nurses that start with an associate's degree in nursing often go back to complete their bachelor's degree. The main difference between the two degrees is that a bachelor's degree has more content on leadership, administration, public health, and evidence-based practice. It gets even more complicated at the graduate level. Advanced practice nurses, which are nurse practitioners, clinical nurse specialists, nurse midwives, and nurse anesthetists may have either a master's degree or a doctor of nursing practice. Although the profession is moving more toward the doctor of nursing practice, which is also now required for nurse anesthetists. The advanced practice master's in nursing requires 500 hours of clinical practice, while the advanced practice a doctor of nursing practice has a total of 1,000 hours of clinical practice. In addition to advanced practice nurses, master's degrees in nursing can also prepare nurses to be nurse educators and nurse leaders. The doctor of nursing practice focuses on clinical practice at an advanced level. Areas such as leadership, quality improvement, policies, and systems thinking. Nurses with a doctor of nursing practice degree can be advanced practice or executive leadership positions, and they can also be nurse educators. PhDs prepare nurses to do research. Often they become faculty, uh, also in leadership positions or in research positions. That's a quick overview of the educational backgrounds for nurses. Next we have Professor Lucas Hill. As Dr. Timmerman mentioned, I'm Dr. Lucas Hill from the UT College of Pharmacy, a clinical assistant professor and a clinical pharmacist practicing in outpatient primary care or within the pharmacy world, what we tend to refer to as ambulatory care practice. Pharmacists uh, will not always have a bachelor's degree before beginning a doctor of pharmacy program. Um, at the UT College of Pharmacy, uh, it tends to be approximately 75% of our students who come in with a prior bachelor's degree, but it's not a formal requirement of the program, uh, and I'm not aware of uh, many other programs where that is a formal requirement. Personally, I did not have an undergraduate degree before beginning the Doctor of Pharmacy program. Um, however, there are a variety of prerequisites that, that personally took me about three years to complete. The PharmD curriculum varies in length at different institutions, but at the majority, you're looking at a four-year program with uh, foundational science courses uh, concentrated earlier in the curriculum and experiential education in the later two years, and especially focused in the fourth year, which tends to be made up uh, almost entirely of experiential rotations in various clinical settings. The PharmD has been the, the minimum degree for entry into practice as a pharmacist for uh, more than a decade. And uh, now graduating with a PharmD degree will typically uh, get a, a graduate an opportunity to work in a community pharmacy, one of the settings where we're most familiar with pharmacists uh, working in their, their local community and dispensing drugs. And in some cases, uh, also providing health screenings and uh, immunizations and access to, to other treatment services. Uh, typically to work in a hospital or clinic setting, a pharmacist is going to need to go to postgraduate training beyond a PharmD level. Um, the majority of PGY1 residency programs are focused in hospitals, though there are some that uh, are specialized or focused in community pharmacy practice. 
and typically a PGY2 residency will be focused in a subspecialty, uh, an area such as ambulatory care, psychiatry, or oncology, uh, as well as a variety of others. Um, pharmacists may also choose to complete elective postgraduate fellowships. Those tend to focus on research, uh, but some do include a, a clinical component, such as the Pharmacy Addictions Research and Medicine Program here at the UT College of Pharmacy. I'm going to hand it off to uh, Dr. Hurwitz to explain physician training to us. My name is Craig Hurwitz, uh, um, Professor Hurwitz, um, and I'm a, a, a physician um, trained as a pediatric oncologist and a pain and palliative medicine uh, physician. Um, the, the, uh, the, 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 the path toward becoming a, a, a licensed physician in the United States um, requires that uh, you have a, a, a degree, an undergraduate degree in, uh, as a Bachelor of Arts, a BA or a BS um, from a college. Um, there are, I will say as a, as a aside to that, there are a few programs here that combine the two. And if you get accepted into that, I know at the University of Kansas, there is a, I believe it's a six year program where you go all six years and you end up with an MD uh, a degree. But the vast majority of, of, uh, of, uh, of, of folks uh, choose to go to college and get a BA or a BS. After that, um, after, after graduation, you go to medical school. Uh, medical school is a four-year program. There are two types of um, medical programs in the United States. You can either become, uh, you choose to become or uh, get into a, 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 a medical doctor, an MD uh, uh, graduate school, or a DO, a doctor of osteopathy. Now, DOs and MDs are very much uh, the same. They're both four-year programs. Um, MDs are trained predominantly in allopathic medicine, which is really focusing on the treatment of disease, processes, and symptoms. Um, uh, and everything must be evidence-based and scientific uh, in its background. Osteopathy uh, really views the, the body in a more holistic uh, manner. I'm not an osteopathic physician, so I can't really tell you much more about that, but it is, uh, they, they see, uh, uh, illness affecting the entire body as, as opposed to one specific disease entity. Either way, after your four years, you will be awarded an MD degree or a DO degree, and you can choose to do a residency in one of the primary um, uh, uh, disciplines of medicine, internal medicine, pediatrics, OBGYNs, general surgery. And those, those programs vary from about three years to uh, up to seven years for surgeries. And, uh, and uh, you go in, the, the resident is, is in the hospital um, as a trainee, although you are paid a nominal fee uh, for your years of service. And after that, then you are allowed to practice in, the, in, the, in pediatrics or in whatever your chosen specialty was. If you choose to go on and subspecialize, there is postgraduate training and fellowships that are from one to three or four years. Um, so for example, I uh, went back and did fellowships in both pediatric oncology as well as pediatric palliative care. Um, and that sort of um, uh, gives you the cred to, to uh, practice clinical medicine in those subspecialties. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. And um, um, would be happy to answer questions if any occur later. But right now I wanna turn it over to my friend, Elizabeth Blankenship. Elizabeth? Thank you, Craig. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth Blankenship. I'm a physician assistant, otherwise known as a PA. So PAs are medical professionals who diagnose illness and develop and manage treatment plans and prescribe medications. We practice in every state and every medical setting and specialty. We're educated at the master's degree level. PA programs are approximately 27 months long, which is three academic years. 
and include classroom instruction in more than 2,000 hours of clinical rotations. A PA's medical education and training are rigorous. We are modeled after the medical school curriculum, which involves both didactic and clinical education training. We have courses in basic medical science, behavioral science, and behavioral ethics. And we have clinical rotations in family medicine, internal medicine, obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics, general surgery, emergency medicine, and psychiatry. PA-specific duties depend on the setting in which they work, their level of experience, their specialty, and state laws. Generally, PAs can take medical histories and conduct physical exams. We can diagnose and treat illness and order and interpret tests. We can develop treatment plans and prescribe medications. We can counsel on preventative care, perform procedures and assist in surgery. And we can also make rounds in the hospital and nursing homes as well as do clinical research. We work in several different clinical settings from hospitals, medical offices, community health centers, nursing homes, retail clinics, educational facilities, workplace clinics, correctional institutions, and also federal government agencies. Just like Craig, happy to um, answer any questions about the PA profession. But for now, I'm going to um, turn it over to Donna, our social worker. Hello, my name is Donna Shaner. I'm a, the Director of Clinical Social Work and Integrated Behavioral Health at UT Health Austin Dell Medical School. I'm also a licensed clinical social worker and a board approved clinical supervisor and a licensed clinical dependency counselor. So I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about training to become a social worker. Um, many people, most people go and get their bachelor's in social work. Um, it's a four year degree and it includes field education, also known as practicum or internships. Um, in social work, it's really important for the profession to have field education or uh, practicum even at the undergrad, undergraduate level. After that, one can go and get their master's degree in social work. So people who already have a bachelor's in social work, um, there are opportunities to do a one-year graduate program. If not, you can go and do the two-year program for your MSW. And in both of those years in graduate school, you'll have um, field education or practicum and internships. After you graduate with your master's degree in social work, you'll go on and get a license uh, in master social work, you'll get your LMSW. And so you can practice under the clinical supervision of a board approved supervisor doing direct clinical work for up to two years. And then after those two, two years and clinical supervision is over, you go back and get another license. You sit for another exam to get your LCSW, which is licensed clinical social worker. And with an LCSW, you can uh, practice independently. You don't have to have anyone sign off on your notes. Um, you're able, if you wanted to, you can put up a shingle on a, an office and start your own practice. You can bill for insurance um, and do a psychotherapy along with other clinical uh, social work activities. Um, I think it's important to mention also around social work that social work um, is not just in the sector of healthcare. We have social workers in education, public policy, nonprofit organizations, um, criminal justice. There's you'll see social workers everywhere. So when it comes to health social work or medical social work, you typically see LCSWs and LMSWs doing direct clinical work in healthcare settings. And that's all I have. Thank you, Professor Shaner, as well as each of our other presenters. Uh, students, we hope this has been helpful to you to clarify some of the variations in training between our professions and show how we can work together, uh, how our, our knowledge and expertise complements one another to form an excellent healthcare team.